Hi, my name is Lori Pillings Rinker, and I'm a brand strategist and a marketing strategist with Brands That Deliver. Today I have with me Kara Romanak, who is the inventor president of Mamie's Pies. I met Kara when I was at the Fancy Food Show, and I was so impressed when I saw her pies, her packaging, her brand, and the fact that she gives back. So, Cara, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you started and about what you're doing? I will, I will. Well, we make frozen, unbaked, all-natural pocket pies. And this is just what they look like. So we've created a product that didn't exist, So, which is great. Kind of, uh, we created our own white space, as they call it. But what was really interesting was how we started. So um, about five years ago, my daughter came home from school and she said, Mom, we don't have enough money for the dance. What are we gonna do? And I'm, by nature, an entrepreneur. Um, I always want to help the schools raise money. And I thought, oh, don't worry, Kiki. Sure. We will, we'll bake some of Mamie's pies. And Mamie is my mom. Hmm. And I said, I'll just, we'll send them into class with you tomorrow and have your teacher call me. And whatever she needs, we'll make. The teacher called and she ordered 120 <laughs> pies. And I thought, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? I'm not a business, yeah. I, I, you know, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do this though. So I immediately said, of course I'll make 120 pies, but I'm gonna freeze them. I'm not gonna bake them so the parents can bake them at home. And then I hung up the phone and I realized, where am I gonna freeze 120 pies? So then in comes United Supermarkets, and I, I called United, and I'd never met, met them before, and I said, could you guys house 120 pies for me in your back freezers wrapped in tin foil with little ribbons on it? And they said, of course we will. So they did, and the fundraiser was a huge success. The school raised all the money they needed, and about eight months later, I dove in and started a business. And I knew that using my mother's recipes and my grandmother's recipes. It was such a hit and I've always loved them, um, but now other people outside of our family loves them. So I literally jumped in, created a logo, designed a package, had the nine inch pies and got these pies into about 20 stores. Now, let me also highlight that you do have a bit of a business background. Give us a, a sense I, of that. I do. I majored in economics and finance um, from Bentley University. <laughs> and I was worked for Merrill Lynch. I was a broker for a number of years. And then I had three kids. And so I kind of transitioned that business side of me to raising money for the schools. So it was a natural fit to, to do a fundraiser and use my family's pies. However, if I remember, there's a story that when you were a little girl, you loved to sell things that you made. So uh, this oh. is not all that different. It, it isn't. I, I, from from uh, metal enameling to macrame, you name it. I love to do it. And my dad would always have a garden and he w I would load up my wheelbarrow with all of his vegetables and I'd wheel them around the neighborhood and I would sell them. So that spirit was always there. So when I decided to jump in and start a business, didn't have a business plan, even though I, I should have, but I didn't. I had a passion and I had a, a, you know, a drive that I wanted to, I, I took a risk. And so um, started, started the business, got into all of these grocery stores. And then I decided, what does it look like across the country? I know my little niche here in Marin, you know, everybody loved, loves the pies. What about nationwide? So I did my first fancy food show and I had a four foot by two foot table. And I had my large pies and these pocket pies that I created. So they're individual servings. And from that point, that's when it started to change from Oprah's team finding my pies to QVC to Stonewall Kitchen. And then I really had to take a hard look of, okay, I'm gonna have to scale this. And when Oprah's team called and said, you know what, we'd love to make you Oprah's favorite, but you're not available through e-commerce. And that was a really big transition point for me. And I decided to stop selling to grocery stores and I built out an e-commerce platform. And we're available nationwide now and now we're launching into grocery stores nationwide. So what Kara was saying is she sort of broke the mold by going to e-commerce first as opposed to going to the grocery stores, but it set her up so now the grocery stores want her because she's a proven entity and a proven brand, which is very important. So you have to get that experience out there and showcase yourself commercially. It's true. Let's take a look at the pies, sure. since they're driving me crazy just sitting here <laughs> looking at them anyway. 
So these are our pocket pies. So they're frozen, unbaked, all natural. And what they basically are is a smaller version of my grandmother's nine inch pie. Customers wanted something smaller, individual serving, so that they don't have a big nine inch pie sitting on the counter. That's how this was born. It was customers asking me, what can you do when it's just my husband and I? And we don't want that big pie there. Exactly. And that's what we created. So they're all natural. And what's so exciting is they literally go freezer to oven in 20 minutes. So you get this incredible all natural pie. And what's so amazing is I don't change any ingredients. So from my grandmother, so there are four ingredients in the filling. For example, our apple, Macintosh apples, a hint of cinnamon, a little bit of um, sugar and cornstarch is our only thickener. That's it. That's all, all natural. Use. It's all natural. And then in the crust, sustainably sourced vegetable shortening, unbleached flour, water, salt. Simple. And you know, if it isn't broke, why fix it? My grandmother used these, re these ingredients. I'm using them. All I did was change the shape. And they're so jam-packed oh with gosh. filling. I think I saw on QVC yes. where the, all this filling just came running out. And of course, I've made them before and so <laughs> made my, my dinner company very happy. I love it. So when I first saw you, I loved the brand and the packaging. It was so colorful. Can you tell me how you developed your brand? Sure, 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 sure. So what I, the, obviously the first thing you want to do, which you know, I don't have to tell you, but the logo. And the logo needs to just kind of reflect your product and, and who you are. And because we're pies, I wanted something simple and old school and that felt good. It wasn't trendy and, and with angles. I wanted it soft. And so that's why I created the logo as it is. And behind the logo, I was able to put the fruit coming out from behind it. And I think that added such a dimension to our logo. And it really brought true that we are a fruit forward product. It's fruit forward pies. So that's how I, I came up with the logo. And then putting that logo on packaging was so... Oh, wait, Im what about the name? Oh, and the, the oh sorry, that's like, that's the most important <laughs> that's thing. That's huge. Mamie is my mom. And so I created the, the, the brand, the, the logo, the name because of her. Without her, I never would have known, would have known how to make this pie. I never would have um, brought it out there. And I thought, it can't be just like Cara's pies. It's got to be Mamie. Mamie is, is the, the key to all of this. So I think that name with yeah. the logo and that the soft edges to it really feels homemade. And it really makes you think of, you know, it's good memories, it's family memories of pie. And then putting the, the fruit behind it. And one thing I wanna mention about why I chose illustration, kind of folk art oh. fruit mm -hmm. instead of fresh fruit, is it went back to the old school homemade feel. A lot of stuff that's out there is bright and shiny and they have the fruit all over the place and I wanted you to look at our logo and look at our product and really think about family and when your family made pies and when you have family gatherings and I, that old school folk art fruit really lends itself to Natural. That. Natural, exactly. And then to use this kind of packaging was very, strategic on my part. I was told, you know, when I was Googling everything mm -hmm. and how to create packaging, oh, you want to put it in a box and do a, a bright, shiny photo on the front that, that makes the product look so good. And I thought, I'm the consumer. I'm that woman that's in the grocery store shopping. Do I want to see a bright and shiny box? No, I want to see quality packaging because if I see quality packaging, I look then and say, I bet that product is quality. So by not putting it in a box and putting a pocket pie in a pocket allows the consumer to see the product. It isn't a surprise if she opens up, usually you open up the box and what's inside never looks what it looks like on the outside. Yes. So I wanted our customers to see that's what I'm buying, that's what I'm getting. There's no freezer burn on it. We flash, flash freeze it, it's quality. And then what I did too, took it a step further. The back, do you see our nutritionals here and our ingredients? 
we made it the entire back of the package, and that was strategic because part of Mamie's motto and mission is to be transparent, full transparency from the product in the, in the package to what's in it listed on the back. We're not gonna make our ingredient list this big. We want you to see that there are four ingredients in the filling. Fabulous. That there are four ingredients in the crust. And now it let, isn't a surprise. Let, let me just uh, point out now, you, you've told me the story earlier. One thing you did tell me is that you got lots of consumer input mm -hmm. from friends and family, from the yes. target audience from people from QVC about your packaging, about your brand, yep. so that you're just not making this up on your own. You've done your homework. I've done my homework. Um, in, when I created this, it was through my gut, and I looked at this not through entrepreneur eyes. I looked at it through a consumer's eyes. What do I want to see when I walk down the grocery aisle? So that was how this started, and, and this is the design that I came up with. It initially was a white chipboard. I didn't have the fruit behind it. So like you just said, being on air, being on QVC, selling the pro my product through e-commerce first before I went to grocery you know, nationwide was so pivotal because I could get the customer feedback. And she would say, hey, you know, I love the packaging, I love the design, and, and uh, maybe you could add a color to it. Not 10 colors, but a color, and I thought, that's a great idea. I love that burgundy color. It may, you know, just a feel good color without being too bright and shiny. And so that's why I created the, the, um, the burgundy in Beautiful. here. Beautiful. Yeah, and I think it really, it really works. And she also said, love that it's small. It's not a box that I have to put into my freezer. I love that if I've got my pizzas in there and my bag of chicken tenders and I have my Mamie's pocket, guess what? I can slide it in anywhere. So it was also not the brand, just the, the look and feel of it, but the fact that it worked in their home. Because if you're gonna create a consumer packaged good, and you gotta have it fit in, in people's lives. And you're getting consumer research for free. For free, which is I mean, and, and to have that exposure on QVC, I do not take that for granted. That I am very thankful for. Also, what I really admire about Mamie's Pies is that you treat your brand consistently through all the different mediums. The website, the packaging, your Instagram, everything, it's got the same look and feel and messaging over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And that builds trust. You are so right. And that that is, I, I believe it's one of the key things. And I always you know, say that everybody has a story. You create a product, you've got a great story behind it. But if you don't have that brand strategy to keep it, like you said, consistent everywhere and also know who your audience is in each, in each um, different channel. Right. And you're going to speak to that audience that you're looking at, but it needs to be generally, it needs to be overall consistent with the brand strategy, which is exactly where you come into play. Right. Because you take that story, you take that, that brand, that that idea, the story, the logo, and you say, okay, what's your, what's your overall vision for your company? And now you're the one that puts that together for a strategy to take out to market. Well, what you say, a story without a strategy goes nowhere. Go, goes nowhere. <laughs> goes nowhere. And the same thing is true. You can have a strategy. You can have the, the, you know, the best strategy out there. But if you don't have the story to back it up, the brand, the look, the feel, it doesn't go anywhere, so well, it's a combination. Let's talk a little bit about what is a brand strategy. Um, first of all, nobody just starts from square one. They already have ideas in their heads, whether they've been around for a long time or it's a brand new product, a brand new company. But the basic principle is always the same with a brand strategy. You get information. You make informed decisions. Strategic means you're thoughtful about it, you're plotting, you're planning, and you have it written down. So the first thing you do is you take a look at externally, what's going on in the industry? Who's out there in the competitive set? Who is your target audience? What do they think about? What do they care about? What do they need? And how can your product fulfill that? Then you take a look internally. What's your vision? What's your purpose out there? What's your personality? What's your style? What is your brand essence? What are you really gifting to the world? And then you take a look at some other facts, like what are my objectives? How much money do I want to make? Or blah, blah, what are my goals? I want to be the most blah. 
So you take a look at all of these factors and then you take a look at the services. How do you actually deliver this product or how will you deliver the product? Because it's really important to be able to deliver the brand. Well, there's a lot more facts that go into a brand strategy, but essentially we look outside and we look internal and then we look for the kismet fit and then how to talk to people and engage them with your brand to help grow your business so you can keep giving your gifts back. And then on top of that, it's really important for my brand that I help all of my clients, and this came from you naturally, to talk about brands that give back, to give back to our community for the greater good. And this is something, Kara, that you definitely do. Oh, um, and that's important to me. I love great products, great revenues, great mm -hmm. profits, but if you're not making money, you can't take care of others. So. You give back with Roots of Peace mm -hmm. and Slide Ranch and the fact that you started this yes. whole thing out of a fundraiser. Yes. Let's yeah. talk a little bit about how you found Roots of Peace and Slide Ranch and what, what you do there. Well, you know, like you said, it, the business started because of a fundraiser and um, it was a natural thing for me. I did a lot of fundraising for the schools. So I believe that no matter how big or small you are in your business, you can always give back. And Roots of Peace is run by Heidi Kuhn, who is a mutual friend who, um, you know, I've known her over the years and she's been so supportive of what I, what I do. And I, I thought, oh my gosh, Heidi, pies for peace. Let's put something together. And, you know, when, when somebody goes on our website and they go to our Pies for Peace page, we donate a percentage of sales to Roots of Peace. They're doing good in this world. And she and, just got the Gandhi Award. And she just got the Gandhi Award. I mean... It's amazing. Amazing. <laughs> amazing. amazing. And you don't have to be this multi-billion dollar company to start giving back. Start, you can just start giving back small because it feels good. You know, if you've always done something like that or you haven't, you can do it. it, it there's, no, there's no limit. And you can decide how you're going to give back and who you're going to work with and Slide Ranch. And that's such an amazing organization. And to do something with them too feels good. And, and, you know, when especially we make pies, it's about memories, it's about families. And then to give back on top of that, there's nothing better. There it, really isn't. It's just the right thing to do. And that's another one of the reasons why I just think that Mamie's Pies is just such a fabulous Thank brand you. and one that I, I really honor. Thank you. Let's give some advice to other people oh. out there. Yes. Other entrepreneurs, people who are stuck in their business and keep going, and people who are just starting out, what yeah. advice do you have for them? You know, I think first and foremost that you need to take a risk. And, mm. you know, I'm a single mom, and I did this fundraiser for the, for the school, and that's what started this whole business. Ended up selling my house, clearing out retirement accounts, and... I'm all in and I, I re now that I look back and I'm in it and I, and I look back at how I started, I really realized that if you wait for the perfect time to start something, um, when all the stars are going to line up, it will never happen. And I think that's why a lot of, a lot of brands, there's a million great ideas that don't see the light of day because people don't take a risk. And I took a risk. And it was a risk that um, I have a good gut. And I think that we always don't follow our gut. Uh, but as you get older, you look back and you realize how many times your gut was right. So I took that chance. I followed my gut. I had a vision. I had an, I had an end goal. What I, wa I wanted to see, I want to see Mamie's Pies in every grocery store in the nation. That's my goal. I had no idea how to get there. But I also knew that if I took two steps, literally just, just two. two, two steps at a then, time, <laughs> at a time, if I just took two steps, the next two steps will reveal themselves to me and it won't feel so overwhelming. Like, oh my God, I've got a thousand steps. I can't do this. I'm not going to do it. No, take two. And, and also another, another really important thing is because, you know, with Oprah's, Oprah's team calling us and making us Oprah's favorite, and we've sold over a million pies on QVC it's alone. amazing. Incredible. Um, but you never want to get too high, and you never want to get too low. And you can get wrapped up in, oh my God, Oprah's team called. I'm, you know, I'm going to be amazing now. It's going to be everywhere. Don't get 
get yourself too high, you know? Temper it, know how amazing it is, and take that and move it along to your next step. What's your next step? Now I've got Oprah, okay, now I'm gonna build out an e-commerce platform. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to appear on QVC. And, and so now that was two years ago. So now I get to look back at what, you know, transitioning and building an e-commerce platform did because of the Oprah's favorite. I can look back now and say what the QVC did for my branding and the overall look and feel of Mamie's and the velocity. It, it truly is amazing. Let's talk about how handling your brand through QVC and mm -hmm. Oprah and all these other em entities, is it difficult to manage the brand? Um, you have to have a good foundation on, who, on what your brand is, who you are, mm -hmm. and what your goal is before you even attempt to um, take advantage of that. Do you, you know? have brand guidelines for them? That they have to use these colors in this way and the logo no you know what my branding is the branding and that's what they use on air so they don't change any of that okay which is good terrific because um i'm not you know my brand is a reflection of me mm -hmm. and my family and who i am and so i'm not going to go in and put my brand in a situation where i have to compromise my brand i'm going to listen to experts in different areas whether it's brand strategy, whether it's in um, design, whatever it is, I will take that input, but I'll never compromise it. Well, one of the things I recommend to a lot of people is develop some brand standards so people know exactly the colors. And not that they mean to, but sometimes they take it and print it and it's the wrong color so that you can control mm -hmm. your brand that's a reflection of you. Yeah. Um, many people create a brand standards or a brand guideline, they put it online or they have a book or some kind of something that they can send out to their partners and, mm -hmm. and to entities that are using their brand. Oh, I totally, I firmly believe in that because the, the, the deeper you get into these different channels, whether it's e-commerce, mm -hmm. whether it's TV, whether it's grocery or food service, there can be a lot of, a lot of changes that your brand might run up against. So you've got to really be solid in who you are and what you're presenting. And the only way that happens is if you have a strategy around it. You can't go in willy-nilly. You, you just can't. Thank you. Thank you. you yeah. You, 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 you literally have to have that because then it's, it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like, as women know, a purse, right? Your purse. You're not going to carry your, your phone, your lipstick, all of this stuff individually. You're going to put it in your purse. And <laughs> that's that, right. <laughs> you know, that is what's going to take you further on your next step. You got it. And a written strategy is very helpful. Thank you so much for sharing all the ins and outs of oh, where you've you. come from, where you've gone, and you are just going out of sight <laughs> here. This is fabulous. Thank you. Is there anything else you would like to share with us about your brand, about your brand strategy that we haven't covered? Um, don't spread yourselves too thin. Okay. So um, you may have an amazing product and everybody wants you. Don't grow too fast. So take one channel at a time. So we took the e-commerce and, and I go back to that word foundation, whether it's your brand strategy foundation or it's your um, foundation in the different channels where you're going to um, get your revenue from. Build a solid foundation, put all of your energy into that, and then take on your next channel. So Mamie's, we built out our e-commerce and our QVC. Now we're, we're digging deep into grocery. So we're launching nationwide into grocery stores and we'll just build that over the next few years. So two steps at a time. Two right? <laughs> steps at a time. And then once we tackle that, we have food service. We've got other channels we want to tackle, but we're never going to spread ourselves too thin. Thank you so much Thank for your you. time. This has been so fun. Oh, I loved it. I loved it. If you want to be a brand that delivers like Kara and Mamie's Pies, give me a call. 